Good evening, Leliu. Good evening, teacher Marcela. Hello, how are you? Uh, yes, fine, tired. Yeah. Tired because, <laughs> because I am on, in a cattle ranch and I don't have people that help me and oh. I made almost everything. Wow. <laughs> that sounds a very um, gigantic, right? A, a task. Wow. Yes. It, it sounds very tough. Yes. Yes. It's really hard because mm, it's uh, we need to work. Uh, I need to work every day, every uh -huh. hour. <laughs> yes, I imagine. Well, in my case, you know, uh, I'm a teacher and I, um, well, we just began the school year, right? Yes. So I've been working a lot and actually I live far from the school where I teach, right? So most of the time I I spend um, like three hours, you know, traveling from my house to the place and I totally get you, right? It's very hard because actually when you're a teacher, especially with kids, I have yes. to do a lot of work, a lot of things. And at, at the end of the day, you know, I ended, I end up very tired. So I cannot imagine how you might feel because actually that <laughs> sounds like a lot of work, even greater <laughs> than the teacher's work. Uh -huh. Yes, so. but the most important that I like, I love this life. Ah, okay. <laughs> and, and there you go. That's the secret, right? And yes. someone said over there, if you love what you do, right, you yes. you will never work, the person said, right? So it sounds great. I'm glad to hear that you like it. Okay. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I was re reviewing, uh, uh, revisando, re yeah, uh, checking, uh, mm -hmm. checking my, my progress. Yeah. And in the in the section two, it's mm -hmm. something that I cannot find. Why I I am not with one hundred percent. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me check. Uh, I try to I try to to find what what is the maybe the book discussion we need to 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 write in the in the in the book discussion discussion after. After that, that uh, when the when the the people who speak in in the in the platform mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. said in the in the book discussion you can write something. I, mm -hmm. I think that it's it's something like that that I yeah that I did. Mm -hmm. yes it's something that before we called uh, the forum right or forum and actually as far as i know elu it is not included in your final grade or in your final score but if you if you want let me go ahead and check and also what i'm what i will ask you is for you to check the platform and in that specific section so go exercise yep. by exercise let me check i'm not pretty sure if i have that option here but guys i would like to show you where you can see more info about your progress. For example, <laughs> this is yeah. my progress, right? What a shame. <laughs> no, the thing is that this one is just uh, whenever I access to the platform and I work an exercise with all of you, right? So yeah. this is the teacher's uh, <laughs> performance. <laughs> Definitely not what I, uh, I would have expected. But as you can see over here, guys, you can see which is the exercise that you failed. For example, here it says zero out of 25. So this one is 25 out of 25, meaning that I got 100 over here, here 100. And this one, I haven't done it. So what you need to do guys, whenever you have a doubt or in your case, Eliu, is that you have to go to this section where you can see your progress, but down below, you can see the scores, but per section. So go over here and you and check that all of the exercises okay. are showing 25 out of 25 like this one. And if there is one that is not showing, you know, exactly the points, most likely that means that that is the exercise that you need to redo, to redo right? So okay. check it and let me know, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank You're you welcome. Much. You're welcome. Okay, everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I know that it was very hard. 
today there was a lot of traffic actually it took me like two hours to get home uh, and also I know that probably some of you had the same problem but I'm so happy to have you here and let's go ahead and begin today we're going to continue with the topics right that we have been discussing and also um, we're going to end you know this section three right and the midterm exam with the last explanation. I think it's just a little bit of vocabulary, right? And some words that I need you to, um, to learn or at least to put into practice. So today is January 27th, if I'm not mistaken, right? And yesterday we were talking about models, right? And the idea here was to go ahead and put them into practice. Um, Whenever we are using models, right, I was saying yesterday is when when you want to give that explanation, right? When you give that explanation about something that you didn't do, that you did, etc. So, for example, there was a, a page and I, actually I really liked the page because we can see some examples, right? And we have three different situations, okay? So in the first situation, we have Mitchie and Molly, right? And Mitchie says, hi, Molly, from Honest Matt, because she thinks I didn't ask her to go hiking with us. I sent her four emails, but she never responded. And then we have two different options for her answer, right? We have Molly's um, uh, responses, and one of them says, well, you know, Ramona never answers emails. You should have called her on the phone. And then the second option that we have is, oh, forget it. I wouldn't have sent so many messages if Ramona can't bother to check her emails. She'll just miss out on things, right? So we have two different responses. And the two of them are using uh, models, right, to give an explanation. However, the two answers are different. Why? Because one of them, it's a little bit rude, but the other one, it's very, it's a very comprehensive, right? Um, I would say response. It's like very empathetic. So which one would you choose? In this case, I'm pretty sure that probably the first one, right? So let's go ahead and continue reading. Can I have more volunteers to read the second situation and then the responses? Volunteers to read? No? Okay, to, uh, today you're very quiet. To read, uh, Claudia, to read the second situation? Uh, yes, Claudia raised her hand. So Claudia, help me with, this, with the situation and then Elie will help me with one of the responses, okay? So, okay. Uh -huh, Claudia, can you read please the second situation? Uh, in this Rom one. Romana. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, Romana, hi. I just got off the phone with Michi. She asked me for advice, but she never stops talking long enough to listen. Okay, thank you so much. Elio, can you please read the first response? Okay, you could have been more understanding. Michi must have been upset and just need to talk. Thank you so much. Another volunteer to read the second response? Me. Thank you, Rafael. Okay, and then Jose Francisco. Rafael, continue. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I will have asked Michi to be quiet for a minute. How can give her advice if that doesn't give you a chance to talk? Okay, thank you very much. Now, here, guys, again, we have two responses, right? And these two responses have to do with this situation. One is very empathetic, empathetic and the other one is not, right? So one is asking for advice, right? But the person never stops, right? Then we have here in the first response, as Elio was reading, you could have been more understanding, right? You could have been more understanding, which is true, right? Okay. Vaya, Marvin, Jose. No he pasado lista, ya casi paso, pero thank you for letting me know that you are here. And then in the second situation, as Rafael was reading, this one is a little bit ruder, right? So, I'm not rude because the other one wasn't. I would have asked Mishi to be quiet for a minute. 
How can you give her advice if she doesn't give you the chance to talk, right? Ya con ganas de pelear, ¿verdad? Okay, so that one probably it's not the right uh, response. But here, guys, what I need you to pay attention to is the way we use them. Ya se fijaron que incluso cuando no somos amables y siendo amables, we, we can use, right, the, the past models. And then we have this, the third situation. So, Jose Francisco, can you read the third situation, please? Yes, Michi, I can't believe that money still has my notes. I needed them for a test today. She never returned since. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, now I volunteer to read the first response. Me. Go ahead, Rosa Maria. Molly, shouldn't have, have kept your notes It's long, but I would, wouldn't have learned them to her the week before a test. Okay, thank you so much, which is true, right? What about the second response? A volunteer? Me. Thank you, Surma. Oh, Molly, may have just for, forgotten, forgotten about them. I will have just borrowing someone else not. Okay, thank you very much, Sulma. Now here, guys, we have a very difficult situation. Why? Because um, we're talking about notes, about important papers, right? So as you know, whenever we go to school, we go to the university, generally we take notes, right? So Ramona is complaining. She is complaining about, I mean, I mean about Michi having, right? Uh, no, no, it's not Michi. I'm sorry. We're talking about Molly. No, it's not Molly. I think it's, I, me, I think they are talking about someone else. Michi, I can't Molly. believe that Molly. Mm -hmm. Molly still has my notes. Exactly. It's Molly the one who has her notes. So now, M Michi is saying something which is true, right? You shouldn't or Molly shouldn't have kept your notes this long right? Why? Because as we know, whenever we have important papers, we have to give them back very quickly, as soon as possible, right? And then it says, oh, Molly may have just forgotten about them. I would have just borrowed someone else's notes, right? Someone else's notes probably are not, <laughs> are not the, the best option because we all write down, you know, things and notes in different ways. So it's like, I don't know, guys, it's difficult, you know, to ask uh, someone else's uh, note, right? I mean, for someone else's notes, because it's not the same. So here, the two situations, okay, are kind of similar, right? And actually, both of them contains the true. But let's go ahead and check the, the, um, the elements, right? So what are the elements that we need with past models, guys? Can you tell me? What are the elements? The, the, mm -hmm. the model, the model, mm -hmm. the, the plus have mm -hmm. plus past participle. Correct, right? That's that's the model. I mean, the the structure that we need. We need a model. Right, we need the the auxiliary in this case the verb have right, and then we have the past participle of the verb, and that's why it's very important to learn the three different roads that we have in the irregular verbs list, right? Because um, this verb call is a regular verb, and all what we have to do is to add ed right called. And then we got that verb, right? Also, what else? Otra cosita que escuché por ahí es los verbos, ¿verdad? Recordemos eh, ver el video. A ver lo que me dice Sandra Patricia. Ah, ok. No se preocupe, Sandra. Gracias por avisarme, ok? No problem. No worries. Entonces, eh, aquí les decía, los verbos en pasado, ¿verdad? For example, I've heard borrowed. Borrowed, it's borrowed, no, borrowed, right? Borrowed, uh, kept, kept, this one, right? Because this one contains the model, in this case, in negative, then I have the auxiliary, and then I have the past participle, kept, right? And then we have wouldn't. This one, guys, it's como madera, se parece a wood, 
Y recordemos que lo que les comentaba, que esa L no suena. O sea, esa L es como que no estuviera ahí. Entonces nos queda un sonido como wouldn't. Would. It's like, um, I don't know, uh, like if you're about to, uh, uh, to throw a kiss, right? That's the way you have to modulate your mouth. And that's going to be wouldn't, right? Wouldn't. Then again here, have, oh no, I'm sorry, the auxiliary, have and past participle, forgotten, right? Would, que sería el modo, have and borrowed, past participle. So that's the structure and that's the way we're going to use it, okay? Now, Besides that, guys, we use past models to go ahead and give advice because actually that's what we have been uh, doing here. Okay, let me erase all my drawings and I'm going to continue with the next page. Okay, so past models for opinions and advice. Okay, so after reading all the situations, right, we can go ahead and see the two different options. Uh, how do I give opinion? Well, if I give opinion, is, yo sé, yo sé que más de alguno va a pensar, pero ¿cómo, cómo que should? Si should siempre ha sido para, para advice. But this is, this one, it's a different level, let's say it, of opinions and advice, right? So if you want to give your opinion, I know that it sounds a little bit crazy, but you are going to use the should version, right? Should or shouldn't, okay? Plus have, which is the auxiliary, plus the past participle, okay? And there we go. Now, if I want to give uh, advice, right? Si ya voy a dar yo consejo, entonces I can use could or I can use would or wouldn't, right, in the negative form. Then I have the auxiliary, auxiliary, and then I have all the past participles over here in the last position, okay? Very good. Entonces, para que no se nos haga difícil, chicos, cada vez que nosotros estamos hablando, y yo sé, yo sé que a veces hay un problemita con, con eso de que es que yo quiero aprender y quiero hablar rápido. No, chicos, no nos confundamos. Hablar rápido no quiere decir hablar fluido, ¿ok? Usted puede hablar súper despacio, pero hablar fluido significa que usted, cada vez que hable, sus oraciones van a llevar un orden correcto, las estructuras van a estar bien aplicadas y su vocabulario y la forma en la que va a responder va a ir demostrando el nivel en el que ustedes están. Recuerden eso, hablar fluido no quiere decir hablar rápido, ¿ok? Más adelante con el tiempo, pues uno empieza a hablar con más rapidez porque uno ya aprendió y pues ya la música, los videos, las películas, las series ya nos ayudaron como a cargarle el hilo a las cosas, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué debo hacer yo en es, eh, cuando estoy aprendiendo? Eso, identificar los elementos que yo necesito. Why? Hay una cosa. Y les voy, a, les voy a contar un ejemplo. En mi caso, yo siento que a mí lo que más me ayudó a aprender, yo, yo nunca fui a una academia ni nada por el estilo, sino que hasta que ya pude ir a la universidad, empecé la carrera de, de idioma inglés y empecé a estudiar idioma inglés. O sea, ya tenía 18 años, ¿verdad? Bueno, casi 19. Entonces, cuesta porque pues no somos como los niños, ¿verdad? Que los niños, wow. ¿verdad? Son unas esponjitas. So in this case, it's different, okay? So something that really helped me is to go element by element. Yo voy elemento por elemento. En mi caso, lo que me ayudó fue la lectura. ¿Qué pasa con la lectura? La lectura lo que ayuda es que nos, no, a nuestro cerebro, ¿verdad? Um, de cierta forma, no sé por qué, pero en mi caso así fue porque todos somos diferentes. Recordemos que cada estudiante es un mundo diferente y aprenden diferente, pero en mi caso fue así. Yo empecé a leer y mi cerebro se empezó a acostumbrar de, de, de ver las estructuras. Y yo lo comprobé un día que de repente empecé a usar palabras que yo sentía que yo no las había aprendido, que yo no me las había memorizado ni que yo las había buscado. 
Entonces poco a poco fui identificando que fue a través de la lectura que mi cerebro empezó como a reconocer palabras y a ubicarlas en las posiciones que correspondían. Entonces esa fui yo, por supuesto. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que recomiendo yo siempre, chicos, que vemos estructuras? Busquemos los elementos. Cuando nosotros hablamos, recordemos, model, have, past participle. Model, have, past participle. Pero, teacher, es que cuando llego al past participle, ahí ya me quedo como stuck. Sí, pero es porque necesitamos también saber una, o al menos tener una buena lista de verbos, ¿ok? Que nos ayuden a poder eh, utilizarlos de la mejor forma y que, que nosotros podamos tenerlos disponibles en ese, en ese glosario mental. Entonces, cierro paréntesis. So, these are the past model for opinions and advice. I know that as I was saying before, whenever we give opinion, we think about should, but when we are talking about these structures, that's going to be a little bit different, okay? And giving opinions is going to be with should, and giving advice is going to be with could or would, okay? I would have borrowed. Yo hubiera prestado o hubiera pedido prestado porque borrow es pedir prestado, no es prestar. Lent es prestar. ¿Sabían la diferencia entre esos dos? Borrow and lent, muy bien, excelente. Borrow es pedir prestado y lent es prestar. So, imaginémoslo así. Lent es el banco que me presta a mí y borrow soy yo la que vengo a pedirle el banco prestado. Okay, entonces, that's about it, guys. I don't know if you have questions about this particular uh, section. No? Any question? Okay, bye. Espero que no haya ninguna pregunta, pero si no, pues con mucho gusto yo lo contesto después. Por el momento, eh, solo voy a hacer una pausa y vamos a pasar lista. Vamos a pasar asistencia very quickly. Eh, just Tengo one... una pregunta. Sí, claro, dígame. En la oración de, de la slide anterior, antes del have, había just. Sí, correcto. Uh -huh. That's right. And in that case, uh, you can go ahead and use it. No problem. So in this case, for example, it says, <clears throat> oh, no, give me a second. I think I'm going to sip some water. So Molly may have just forgotten, ¿verdad? Ella quizás solo olvidó, ¿verdad? Just. Now, just, guys, um, sometimes it's, you can include it. I mean, it's optional. No, no, it's not something that you need to include, right? But let's go ahead and check on the meaning, right? So just, let me see, it's like this, okay? <clears throat> Como other solo, justo, ¿verdad? Eh, yo honestamente me, voy, me iría por esta, ¿verdad? Ella solo quizás lo olvidó, ¿verdad? May just have may have just forgotten about them. Que ella quizás solo lo olvidó. Ok. Entonces, ese just que ustedes ven ahí es opcional. Si ustedes sienten que lo necesitan, ¿y para qué me sirve, teacher? Para darle énfasis, ¿verdad? A la oración o a lo que yo quiero decir. Ah, Molly may have just forgotten, right? A veces nosotros incluso en español decimos, no, hombre, ¿verdad? Quizás solo se le olvidó. Y ahí, así déjalo, ¿verdad? No, no, no. No te pongas a pelear. Entonces, son esas palabritas que nosotros probablemente le agregamos para hacer un significado más smooth. Smooth es como más así, más suavecito, ¿verdad? Entonces, just is just an adverb. Es solo un adverbio, ¿verdad? Es opcional. Y pues si usted quiere, lo incluye o no, ¿verdad? No sé si contesto su pregunta. ¿O todavía hay dudas? No, ya sí, ya sí. Hoy sí. Vaya, perfecto. Excellent. Ok, entonces ahora me toca buscar su lista, chicos. Give me a second. Es que casi que es la última de la lista, la de ustedes, como están en avanzada, en preavanzada. Aquí está. Give me a moment. Vaya, la otra semana, por cierto, aprovecho el, el espacio aquí. La otra semana recordemos que sí vamos de, eh, de lunes a jueves, ok. Solamente la semana pasada, yo sé que ha sido un poco pesado, créame que los comprendo perfectamente, ¿verdad? Pero ya la otra semana sí vamos de lunes a jueves. 
igual las, las últimas dos, ¿verdad? No solo esas, sino que las últimas dos. Vaya, chicos. Ocultar acá y hoy es viernes. Alba, dir por tal día. Eh, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Sandra y Marvin también contestaron en el chat, ¿verdad? Bye. Ana Francisca Graz García Nieto. Present Thank you. Carlos teacher. Antonio. Thank you. Eh, Carlos Antonio González Mila. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Here. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Here. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. Jenny Lisset Campos Martínez. José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Eh, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh, María Azucena. Ups. Ma María Azucena Ayala de Flores. No estoy ocupada en la clase. No estoy ocupada. Permítame, ahí está. Eh, María Susana y la de Flores. Luego Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Marta Ruth Enrique Reyes. Marvin Joseph. Ah, sí, ya me contestó en el chat, ¿verdad? Salazar Alas, aquí está. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Nate Ibis Méndez Alpeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira, Pereira Flores. Eh, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Eh, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno, que fue que me dijo que está aquí, pero en reunión. Eh, Jensi Marlene León López. Present, teacher. Thank you, and Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. Present. Okay, thank you so much, guys, and we're going to go back there. Uh, let me see. Uh, complete the sentence. Ah, sí, sí, claro, claro, ahí vamos ya. Solo vemos esto del vocabulario, Nady, y con gusto vemos lo del examen, no hay problema, permítame. Ok, bueno, ya. ya sabe. Vaya chicos, solo vamos a ver el parte del vocabulario, ¿verdad? Que tenemos en la plataforma y que de hecho está bien bonito. <ríe> ok, dice reactions. Guys, it is very important, right, to know it, vocabulary about reactions, right? Very quickly, let's go through each of the words, the pronunciation of the words, right? And then we're going to try to find examples, right? So here we have the first one, an assumption, an assumption. So an assumption, remember that it has to do in the way we perceive things, the way we feel about them, right? For example, if you say good morning to a person and the person didn't answer, right, there could be an assumption on the, on the reasons why the person didn't answer to your greeting. If you say good morning, right, and you saw the person and the person didn't reply, you may start thinking, ah, probably she's angry at me or mm, probably she's sick, right? Or you assume, right, that she is sick or she's feeling bad because generally she doesn't act or behave like that, right? So an assumption. Then we have a criticism, criticism, right? So a criticism, right, has to do in the way we, um, I would say, consider something or someone 
you know, um, acts, behaves, etc. So that's going to be criticism. Probably the way, you know, things are done and that uh, opinion about that particular situation. We have a demand, a demand. We have an excuse, right? We have a prediction, uh, a suggestion, a suspicion, and a warning. But before we move, okay, or before we continue with that, uh, do you have questions about the vocabulary words? Questions about the vocabulary words? No? I mean assumption. And with um, some, with an assumption, okay? Mm -hmm. So tell me, what is your question? What's the meaning? Ah, what is the meaning? Okay, um, es asumir algo, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. En español, ajá, es como, es diferente. Because actually, I cannot think of a word. But if you go to Lingui, right? If we go to Lingui, by the way, no les había recomendado ese sitio web, Lingui. No. Vaya, entonces se lo voy a poner aquí en el chat, mm -hmm. el link. Lingui es una página bien bonita y les voy a contar por qué. Lingui eh, tiene como la, la opción, ¿verdad? De darle diferentes eh, significados para que usted pueda interpretar o traducir algo. Quiere decir que le da como eh, más opciones, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, aquí assumption es una suposición. ¿verdad? That's an assumption. Entonces, lo bonito de esta página es que incluso pues le ayuda muchísimo a personas que traducen o interpretan el idioma inglés de forma escrita y oral. Entonces, acá abajo, si usted se fija, les da como fuentes y les da ejemplos en inglés y en español de cómo la palabra es utilizada, right? Y aquí arriba les da todas las opciones que ustedes tienen como para poderla poner ponerla en práctica o poder traducirla al español. Porque hay dos cosas, chicos, y esto es, es de dejarlo claro. A veces nosotros necesitamos una eh, interpretación y a veces necesitamos un, una traducción. Recordemos que la traducción es de forma escrita, ¿verdad? Cuando nosotros decimos voy a traducir esto, es que lo voy a hacer de forma escrita. Pero cuando decimos tengo que interpretar esto, es cuando yo lo voy a hacer de forma oral. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, o de forma hablada. Ay, que me hace con I need to sneeze. Ay, sorry. No, I no. need to sneeze. Thank you so much. Pero no lo quise asustar con mi estornudo. I needed to sneeze, right? So, thank you so much. And, right, eh, that, that would be the word in Spanish. Entonces, aquí tengo yo todas las opciones y yo digo, bueno, de acuerdo al contexto, la mejor opción sería suposición. And that is a theory must be based on facts, not an assumption. Una teoría debe basarse en hechos, no en una suposición. Entonces, cuando nosotros de repente tenemos esa situación, we assume. Vaya, otra cosa, esto, assumption es un nombre. As you can see, aquí dice sustantivo. Pero, por ejemplo, si yo quiero saber el verbo, aquí está, es assume. ¿Ok? Y aquí lo puede escuchar. To assume. Assume, right? ¿Escucharon? O oh, no sé si estoy compartiendo sonido. Yes. Ah, ah, ok, sí se escucha. Yes, we heard. Okay, very good. Entonces, you click on here and you can see the pronunciation and it gives you the option, you see? To assume. Or if you can listen to the uh, in, into the British English um, uh, accent. To assume. To assume, right? So this, it's very nice. I, I, I strongly recommend right this option because actually it's very good for you to go ahead and learn uh, new words and also to find the best way to um, in, interpret. I think it's the word, right? Interpretar en, en, en el, esa palabra en español. Entonces, recuerde, cuando es así, muy rara vez va a ser una sola palabra. Tenemos que buscar el contexto y basarnos en el contexto para saber cuál sería la mejor eh, opción. ¿Ok? No sé si hay alguna otra pregunta, chicos, con respecto al vocabulario. ¿No? Ok, solo déjenme ver. Uy, perdón, estoy en el... Pensé que estaba en el... En el en el manual. Estamos en la unidad 
está en la unidad. Ah, ok, tres. Para que veamos las respuestas. Que me hace que... Oh, y da 13. Voy. Aquí está. Unit 13. Unit 13. One moment, guys. The right stuff. Unit 13. That's a possibility. Aquí está. Entonces, this one is exercise 10, right? Exercise 10. Aquí está. Very good. Entonces, vamos a ver. Let's go ahead and read the, um, the examples. So, the first one is, if you do it again, you'll have to find a new girlfriend, right? So, Megan's boyfriend forgot her birthday. How does she react? Match each reaction with the best example, right? So I guess, uh, I mean, that's a very common situation, forgetting your boyfriends or your girlfriends or your wives or your uh, um, husband's birthday, right? So how does the person react? So this one is a very specific situation and we're going to check the answers and then we're going to move to the uh, exam, okay? So an assumption, what do you think it's the best example for an assumption? An assumption, anyone? You must have wanted to break up with me. <laughs> exactly, right? Okay, so I think that that would be uh, an option. For some reason, I think probably that person assumed that, right? You know, I'm sorry, that was not the right one. You said this one, right? You must have wanted to break up with me, right? An assumption. Then a criticism. Criticism. Letter B. Okay, letter B, right? You letter can. C, 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 yeah, C. Letter B or C? C. Okay, C, yeah, that's true. You can be so inconsiderate, right? Now, let's go ahead and, and check that word, because actually that's another one. Inconsiderate. Esta creo que. Bueno, al menos a mí se me olvida. Inconsiderate, right? There we go. Y tenemos aquí, inconsiderate is toughly causing hurt or inconvenient to others. Es como en español, chicos, es desconsiderado. Eso es, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, escucho un micrófono activo, pero no veo cuál es. Ah, ya lo encontré, aquí está. Este, that is uh, inconsiderado, right? So you can be so inconsiderate, right? Then a demand, a demand. What do you think? A demand. Letter G. Letter no. G. Okay, letter G. Could be, you right? Know you ought to buy me flowers. Okay, hmm. you, know, you know, you ought to buy me uh, flowers. Okay, very good. I can see another one. Yo puedo ver otra. Vamos a ver. Porque esa letter G la voy a necesitar más adelante. So, what do you think? There is another one that sounds more like a demand. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, you had to take me out to dinner twice. <laughs> exactly, right? So, this one will be a demand. Now, you have to, because look at the, at the verb that the person is using. Now, you have to take me out to dinner, right? Twice, not, not only once, not because of her birthday, but she's asking for a special dinner twice. Okay, very good. An excuse. Number four, an excuse. It's okay, you must feel really sorry. <laughs> okay, it's okay, right? You must feel really sorry. Okay, I think this one is okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, right? You must feel really sorry. Then a prediction. I bet you were out with another woman. 
I bet, no, because it's a prediction and a prediction is for the future, remember. Okay, D, letter oh, D. Oh, you're probably. Ajá, uh -huh, exactly. Creo que escuché la letra y usted también, José, dijo parte de la oración. Espero que haber escuchado bien. Pero me dijeron, letter? D. D, D. exactly, right? You'll probably forget our anniversary too, right? Pobrecito, ¿verdad? se lo pidió el cumpleaños, ahora ya lo, ya lo acusó ella de olvidar el, el aniversario. A suggestion, guys. A suggestion. Number six. Ahora sí letter pueden ocupar. Letter A. You know. Ajá. No, letter G. Letter G, exactly. ¿Por you qué, know. teacher? ¿Por qué? Porque aquí tenemos el O2, right? O2 is similar to have to, right? Entonces, you know you ought to buy me flowers, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a suggestion. Very good. A suspicion? A suspicion? Letter B. Letter, letter B. Letter B, exactly. B. Hmm, I bet you were out with another woman, right? <laughs> Pobrecito, ¿verdad? Todo le pasó al pobre. And the last one, a warning, <laughs> obviously. A. <laughs> letter A, exactly. <laughs> if you do it again, you'll have to find a new girlfriend, right? Todo sentenciado al pobre muchacho. Bueno, entonces, those are, you know, some examples of these reactions that we may have, right? And actually, these ones are good because you might need them in an interview, right? For example, um, what do you think about criticism, right? What do you think about feedback? What uh, do you tend to assume things or, you know, do you tend to um, make assumptions? right uh, of the situations do you have suggestions right uh, etc so i think all these words are very important for you to know them all okay so i'm going to erase all my drawings y ahora sí chicos me voy a pasar a la plataforma y vamos a ver las preguntas del examen todavía tenemos 20 minutos así que let's go ahead and check so with this one right we close there is just one reading exercise over here that it's also included in the manual. And with that, you move to the final exam. I mean, to the midterm exam. There is a listening, but I would like to know what will be the most challenging exercises, right? That you have, because over here, you were mentioning letter C. Okay, so A, B, C. Let's go ahead and, ch and check this one. And then also uh, think. Think about other challenging exercises that you encounter, right, in the exercise so we can complete them today. Así ya se van ya con esas secciones terminadas. Recuerden que hoy es, um, ya para hoy debemos de tener completa la sección eh, dos, perdón, tres y el midterm exam. Ok, comencemos entonces. Dice, oh, perdón, ¿es esta Nady? Uh, pa part 3, teacher. Part 3, part 1, yes. part 2, yes. and part 3. Muy bien, instructions. Complete the sentences with because, due to, for, or since. Watch for capital letters when a sentence begins, right? Ok, very good. Remember, that the platform is very, very, um, I think it was sensitive, no, sensible, okay? Then it says, uh, I like the Food Network channel, right? And then blah, 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 it always has interesting cooking shows, okay? So what do you think, guys? It's the best conjunction for these, uh, for these two sentences. Because. Okay, because. we're going to try because. Very good. Because. Now, in this case, I don't need a capital letter because actually it's in between the two sentences. It's joining the two things. I like the Food Network channel because it always has interesting cooking shows. Very good. Then the next one. Blah, blah, blah. The discount department store opened. There is no place to park on Main Street. So what do you think is what we need? 
Since. Since, very good, okay? Exactly, since. Since the discount department store opened, there is no place to park on Main Street. Now, this one, remember, remember the difference between for and since. Since it's when I want to talk about something that began, but still continues. And for, in this case, is specified a time when something begins, también, ¿verdad? So that's why it tends to be a little bit confusing. So since the discount, o desde que ese departamento abrió, ¿verdad? Since the discount department store opened, there is no place to park on Main Street. And what about the last one? You know, Starbucks is famous, blah, blah, blah. It's coffee, but I love its pastries. Four. Very Four. good. Four. Very good. Four, yes, good. right? Four. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here we have. Now over here, right, we need to answer all of them. Pero si ustedes lo hacen y le dan clic, porque a mí no me da, no me da la opción acá, le va, le va a permitir pasar, porque esas son las tres opciones que ustedes necesitan. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome, Nady. Claro que sí, a la orden. ¿Alguien más que tenga preguntas con el examen? ¿Alguna sección específica? ¿Nadie? ¿No? ¿Algo, algo que no haya quedado claro, que ustedes digan, no, Chicha, tal vez nos puede explicar esto otra vez. ¿No hay preguntas, chicos? En el, en el, en el examen uh -huh. hay una, hay un párrafo que, que lee y las preguntas no tienen relación con lo que está con lo que se leyó. ¿Será este? Es, no recuerdo exactamente, sí. pero eso. Quiero mm. ver. Sí, tiene que ser este porque creo que aquí. Ajá, ya me manda la sección 4. Quiero ver. Ajá. Si me paso aquí a readings. Vaya, es más, leámoslo. Leámoslo, vaya. <coughs> Veamos. Ay, se ve bien, bien, bien así como blurry, pero bueno. Reading is fun. Ok, reading is fun. Eh, si gustan, tal vez tal, hay algunos volunteers que quieran leer. Son one, two, three, four paragraphs. So, can I have four volunteers to read? Thank you, Rosa María. Ok, Eliu, Rosa María. Quiero ver cuántas manos hay, espérame. Ok, ahí están los cuatro ya. Pero no la bajen porque si no, no sé después quién era el que seguía. Vaya, tengo, a, ahí está, gracias, ahí déjela. Ok, so Rosa María, comienza usted con el primero. Y yo se lo voy a ir marcando, segundo Eliu. Luego tenemos a Marvin y por último a Rafael. Ok, uh, let me go ahead and just highlight the sections. I am ready. Let's begin. Book club members know that sharing and talking about books with others can be very rewar rewarding. Rewarding. For people who rewarding for people who feel that they are too busy during a book club helps mm -hmm. them keep up with a reading say so, i don't know how do you say schedule schedule schedule, schedule. Mm -hmm. schedules other others have guided self-confidence by participating in our leading a discussion and most people in, enjoy the, the chance to make new friends excellent thank you very much eh, rosa maria and no let's worries. go okay let's go ahead and check some words okay that uh we need to um just uh, take care with, with when it comes to pronunciation, right? Rewarding, something rewarding, guys. It's for example, whenever you have a busy day, probably you reward yourself with a dessert or you say, no, today I deserve a hamburger, right? Today I deserve, um, I don't know, uh, a cold bath, right? Or today I deserve some coffee, good coffee, etc. So that's rewarding busy right <laughs> there's like a vibration on your throat right when you put your hand on your throat uh and you can see you can hear i'm sorry that sound busy right then keep up 
keep up means continue or to continue with something, right? Then this word has two different pronunciation ways, right? Y es más, vamos a usar esta para que puedan escuchar la diferencia. Um, we have the British version and we have the North American version, okay? So, por eso la van a escuchar de dos formas. Vamos a ver acá. Schedule. Okay, esta es la forma North American version, okay? Schedule. Schedule. Listen, schedule, schedule, right? And then we have the British version. Schedule. Vamos acá. Schedule. Ah, oigan la diferencia? Schedule. 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 And a schedule, right? Schedule and? Schedule. Schedule. Mm -hmm. So th those are the words, right? That, uh, I mean, those are the two types of pronunciation that we can have. And then we have also, oh, give me a second. Is this one? Or no, it's the platform, right? It's this one, platform. Ahí está. Y era acá. And then gained. Gained means to obtain and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Ahora vamos, Eliu, con the second part. Solo que el second part está, el second paragraph está como divided acá y acá. Come, let's begin, please. Okay. A successful, a successful book club should be small enough so the quiet people can be heard, but also big enough for many different opinions. Mm -hmm. The best arrangement is a mixture of age and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Some book clubs meet in bookstores, public libraries, or cafes, mm -hmm. or, even, or even online, but must have their meeting in members' home. This city offers a quiet space in time for longer discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this one, remember, is arrangement, right? Arrangement. Elio, mm -hmm. arrangement. Elio lo dijo bien, solo nada más recordarle, ¿verdad? porque no sé por qué a mí me pasaba que yo tendía a olvidar la pronunciación de esta, pero es arrangement, right? Arrangement, or in Spanish, we say eh, arreglo. Cuando quedamos y planeamos algo, tenemos un arreglo, right? Then it's a mixture of ages, right? Ages and backgrounds. This dress goes at the beginning. Backgrounds, right? And setting or setting. La dos están bien. Setting or setting. So thank you very much, Eliu. And then we move with uh, Marvin. Can you read the third paragraph? Hey, teacher. A book club called a specialist in one object or type of book, like mystery, science fiction, or biography. Mm -hmm. Or the member called read all type of book, as long as the book is recommended by someone who thinks is more big world discussion. Mm -hmm. Very good, okay? So here is specialize, a specialize, okay? Uh -huh. Biography. Biography. Biography and recommended. 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 Uh -huh. Then this one estaba, estuvo super bien, bien smooth, pero estuvo super bien. Would be worth discussing. Muy bien. Mm -hmm. Worth discussing. So... Then, thank you so much, Rafael. No, perdón, Marvin, ¿verdad? Ahora vamos con Rafael, el number four. For the, for the meeting to go smoothly, uh, leaders should be appointed. Mm -hmm. The leader will usually start the discussion and keep it going when needed. Mm -hmm. Both club members should never be afraid to offer their opinion. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't like a book. Different opinions makes the discussion livelier. Mm -hmm. Very good, excellent. Uh -huh. Yes, al final see discussion was, uh, ahí si me la dijo bien, discussion, right? Discussion, very good. Smoothly, uh -huh. muy, muy bien, sway smoothly, right? Okay, excellent guys. Do you have questions about the vocabulary words? Any word that you don't know, guys? Words that you don't know? 
What's the meaning of a uh, guidant? What's the meaning of? A uh, guidant? Guidant. Yes. Uh, that was here, right? In number four. Mm, uh, no. It's the paragraph one. Ah, guidance. paragraph now. Okay. Let me see. Other to have Ah, guidance. okay. Acá. Or leading a discussion, right? No. Uh, arriba. Others have guidance. G A E. No, 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 don't worry. The, the, the uh, gained, this one? Yes. Gained, gained is obtain o ganar. Mm -hmm. Gained, okay. obtain, that, that would be a synonym. Mm -hmm. To obtain something, right? So others have gained self confidence. Mm -hmm. Otros han conseguido o ganado, ¿verdad? Eh, confianza en sí mismo. Eso es self confidence, confianza en sí mismo. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any Thanks. other, you're welcome, Ceci. Any other question? Preguntas, chicos? No tengan eh, miedo ni pena de preguntar, para eso estamos. Libler, libler. Ah, libler es así como eh, divertido, ¿verdad? Algo entretenido, porque es lo contrario, ¿verdad? De, de libler sería como así todo apagado, todo... Eh, no quiero decir la palabra porque se ve bien fea, pero así cuando no hay vida, ¿vea? Entonces, incluso si lo buscamos acá, también nos va a dar otros sinónimos. Veamos. Uy, la, li, la, Ahí está. Voy a, a borrar todos mis dibujitos, esperen. Borrar todos mis dibujitos. Ahí está. Mira, más animado, ¿ve? Lively, ¿verdad? Animado. Vivaz, dinámico, brillante, chispeante, intenso, right? So, lleno de vida, eso es livelier. Y también tienen lively. Los dos, la verdad es que son adjetivos y si ustedes se fijan, son casi que lo, lo mismo significan. Entonces, solo que este livelier, si usted se fija, tiene un ER al final, es un IER, lo que significa que es un comparativo, por eso aquí dice más animado. Y aquí está en, con Y porque es el adjetivo. Y este es adjetivo comparativo. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, no sé, no sé si hay más preguntas, chicos. More questions about the vocabulary words? No? Ok, muy bien. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the, ex, at the question. Dice, a book club, it's only for people who have a lot of time to read. Is that true or false? False. False. Ok. Uno dice false, por ahí escuché false y por ahí escuché uh, true, right? Ok, otros me dicen true. Dice, a book club is only for people who have a lot of time to read. Eh, no necessarily, right? If you think about it. Oh, perdón, Rafael tenía pregunta. Es que veo su hermano levantada. No sé si tenía pregunta. No, ok. Bye, perfecto. Pero me quiero ver algo acá. Give me a second, guys. Quiero arreglar las camaditas. Eh, quiero ver algo acá. Bye, ahí estamos. En este caso, eh, yo diría no, porque eso es an assumption. Yo estoy asumiendo. I'm assuming no, because at least to me it's not the case. But based on the on the on the answers that we have in, on the platform, it's true. Basado en lo que tiene la plataforma, it's true. Okay. Luego, some members have become more self-confident by leading discussions in a book club. Is that true or false? True. Mm -hmm. Vaya, fíjense lo que dice aquí. Dice, for people who feel that they are too busy to read, a book club helps them keep up with a reading schedule. Others have gained self-confidence by participating in or leading a discussion, right? Y aquí dice, some members have become more self-confident by leading a discussion in a book club. Y fíjense que les voy a ser honesta. Yo creo que aquí es donde viene el punto de Eliu. Este, por ejemplo, basado en lo que dice aquí, para mí, esto es true. Porque aquí lo dice. ¿eh? 
Others have gained or some members have become more self-confident. Creo que aquí lo que tiene que ver es esta parte, la primera. Some members y aquí dice others have gained. Probablemente ahí es donde está como la discrepancia, pero en la plataforma, ¿verdad? La respuesta es false. False porque acuerdo, de acuerdo a eso son otras personas y aquí son algunos miembros, right? Entonces, basado en lo que está en la plataforma, eso sería false. Luego dice, a book club should have a lot of members with the same opinions. Right? A book club should have a lot of members with the same opinion. Now, True. in this case, based on the uh, on the response, in my case, it would be false. Pero en la plataforma es true, ¿verdad? Entonces, porque aquí dice que debe de tener la misma opinión cuando aquí they encourage you to have different opinions, right? Eh, let me see. Ajá, porque está hablando de discussions, que no necesariamente, ¿verdad? Aquí dice, members know that sharing and talking about books with others can be very rewarding. Right, entonces it's not about having an opinion, a one opinion. Um, I mean that represents all the represents all the members, but members can have different opinions, right? Then a successful book club has members with different backgrounds and ages. What do you think? It's true. Uh -huh. Esta sí, pues, I think it's true. And then number. Number five, right? A book club could choose to read many different types of book. And false? False, right? In this case, um, based on the uh, answer from the platform, that would be false. Most clubs have their meetings in their homes or of their members. False. Ajá, de acuerdo a la plataforma es false, ¿ok? Luego, eh, it's better not to have a leader in charge of the discussion. True. True, True. right? Mm -hmm. Que recomienda que, haya un, que estén switching, que estén cambiando. Luego, it's not okay to dislike the book being discussed. Mm, false. Es false, porque incluso ahí dice, ¿verdad? Que aunque no te guste el libro, puedes opinar y le puedes ayudar a otros, ¿verdad? A, a completar la lectura. Entonces le doy clic en Submit. Y si ustedes se fijan, me da los 25 puntos. ¿De acuerdo? Si tienen dificultades para poder a, trabajar este ejercicio, vea el video. Recuerden que yo trato de dejárselo solo el, el, el día de ayer, fue la única excepción. Pero de ahí yo generalmente los dejo subidos eh, siempre el mismo día. Eh, la clase, ¿verdad? Por si usted tiene problema para completar este, aquí queda y yo tuve la oportunidad de discutirlo con ustedes. Y chicos, pues ya voy cerrando porque ya se me acabó el tiempo. Voy a pasar la lista así rapidito, ¿verdad? Igual pues cualquier cosa o pregunta también la pueden hacer o anotar para la siguiente clase. Pregúntame. Vale, aquí está. Eh, Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Eh, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here. Thank you, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you, Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Eh, Cecilia Elizabeth eh, Guardado Gutiérrez. Here. Thank you, Claudia Marcela Linares Surquilla. Here. Thank you, Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Tina Esmeralda Ayala López. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Give me a second, guys, que no les he puesto la falta a los que no están. Permítanme. Ahí está. Eh, quiero ver Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jenny Lizette Campos Martínez. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you, María, I'm sorry, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present, teacher. Thank you, María Susana Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. 
Thank you, Marta Estela. Eh, Marta Ruz, Enrique Sánchez. No. Eh, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Méndez Salveño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Permítame. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Eh, Rosa María del Milagro no, Pérez de Paz. Present. Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you. Jensi Marlene León López. And Zulma Beatriz Pere Galdames. I'm here. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you very much for joining. Perdón que les tuve unos minutos de más. Pero thank you for uh, joining the class. And let's meet on Monday, okay? Have a thank wonderful you. weekend. Thanks. Okay, see you Monday. You. You. You're welcome, guys. You. See you on Monday. Bye-bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye-bye, guys.